So far in this course, we've mostly been looking at what happens to Markov chains in the short run, that is, what will happen the next step, or maybe a two-step or three-step transition probability. But now we're shifting towards looking at what happens to Markov chains in the long run, over a very long period of time. And it will be important to split our states into two different types of states, which we call recurrent states and transient states. A recurrent state is one that, if we ever visit there, we keep coming back again and again, and we just keep returning to this state lots and lots and lots of times. Whereas a transient state is one that perhaps we visit a few times at the beginning of the chain, but eventually we will leave and never come back to that state. Well, those are recurrent and transient states, and being able to tell the difference between those will be important to learn about what happens to the Markov chain in the long run. OK, so here we can see a table from the notes giving some of the differences between recurrent and transient states. So let's look at the, the first row. In a recurrent state, if we ever visit i, then we keep returning to i again and again, which is what we said earlier. Whereas a transient state, we might visit a few times and never come back. Now that's kind of an informal description. Right? There's not really any maths there. So I don't think we need to go any further with that, just to say that's an informal description of recurrent and transient. OK, let's, let's look at this second row. Uh, starting from i, the expected number to visits to i is infinite, if it's recurrent, or is finite if the state is transient. The expected number of visits is infinite for recurrent or finite for transient. Is this third row. Starting from i, the number of visits to i is certain to be infinite. So up here we had the expected number is, if, if, is infinite. But in fact, it's certain to be infinite. And again, for transient, up here we had the expected number is finite. But actually, the number of visits is certain to be finite. So there's a real dichotomy here. Like Recurrent states and transient states are totally different. And then finally, this last one, the return probability, mi equals 1 for recurrent, or is strictly less than 1 for transient. You should remember the return probability uh, from section 8.2. That's the probability that if you get to a state, you ever come back again. So if you're certain to come back again, you're recurrent. If you're not certain to come back again, you might come back, you might not. Then you're transient. OK, this was just a description of properties. How are we going to do this mathematically? We said that the first row was an informal description. There's nothing to do here. Turns out the most convenient way to do this is to have this bottom row be the definition. Because you only want one thing as the definition, really. So the definition of recurrent is that the return probability equals 1. And the definition of a transient state is that the return probability of that state is equal to 1. So that's our definition of recurrent state and transient state. A recurrent state, we return with probability 1. A transient state, we return with probability less than 1. Might come back, might not. And then these two middle columns here, it will, the, the best way to do this is to prove these as properties, as in taking the definition in red, prove the properties in green from that. That's kind of the best mathematical way of doing it. So if we scroll down here, here precisely is that theorem. Right? Consider a Markov chain. If state i is recurrent, by which we mean uh, if mi equals 1, and here if i is transient, by that we mean if mi is less than 1. Note here, this sum of PIIN and this sum of PIIN here, that is precisely the expected number of visits to i starting from i. Uh, you might just need a moment to think through. That's summing up the probability of a visit to i at time n for all n, so that's the expected total number of visits. And again, we have uh, up here infinitely many times with probability 1, as in certain to be infinitely many, and here with probability 0, i.e. finitely many, with probability 1. 
And so there's a proof of that in the notes. Uh, the proof of that in the notes is at the end of this subsection, underneath the examples that we'll see in a minute, because I wanted to get to the examples as soon as possible. It's much easier to understand what's going on with recurrence and transients once we've seen some examples. So can you guess what my first example is when I have a new thing to say about Markov chains? Of course, my first example is going to be the simple random walk, isn't it? So for the simple random walk, uh, we looked at what the return probability of the simple random walk was in, in subsection 8.3. You might need to briefly go back to remind yourself what we proved in subsection 8.3. We proved that for the symmetric case, where, where p equals a half, we go up and down with equal probability, uh, we saw that mi equals 1. I mean, we showed it for m0, but of course, you know, all the states of a random walk are the same. mi equals 1. So that means here, all states are recurrent to the simple symmetric random walk. But for all the other simple random walks where p is not equal to a half, uh, we showed that uh, mi is less than 1. Uh, so in that case, all states are transient. So that's a kind of a big difference between the symmetric random walk and the other random walks. In the symmetric random walk, if you get to any state, you'll return there infinitely many times, just keep returning again and again. But in a non-symmetric random walk, if p is bigger than a half, you know, on average you're tending to get bigger and bigger and bigger, so you might visit a state a few times, but eventually you'll fly off to the right, and similarly if p is less than a half, you tend to flow down to the left, down to the negative numbers, so you might hit a state a few times, but eventually you'll leave and never come back, because you're transient. Down here's another example. You should uh, recognize this from uh, section 7 when we were doing about classes and periodicity. So we know what the classes are here. There's a class on the left, there's a class on the right. We know what the periods are. Period 2 on the left, period 3 on the right. What about recurrence and transients? Let's start with state 5. Hey? Once we're at state 5, we go down that edge with probability 1, that edge with probability 1, that edge with probability 1, and come back. So we're always guaranteed to keep coming back to 5. Right? We'll just keep cycling around the cycle. So 5 is recurrent. And the same is true for 6 and 7, right? For both of those, we just keep cycling around this. So that is recurrent. And that is recurrent dead easy. Okay, what about state 4? Well, state 4, something that could happen on the first step, once we're at 4, is that we could take that edge with probability a third, right? And if we took that edge, we'd then end up cycling around this triangle on the right-hand side and we'd never come back. So there's certainly a positive probability that we go straight down to 5 and don't come back. So that means that the return probability to 4 is less than 1, right? Because with a third probability, we go to 5 and never come back. So in fact, the return probability is less than 2 thirds. So 4 is transient. OK, what about state 1? Well, again, state 1, something that could happen is that we could take that edge down to 4, and then that edge out to 5, and then never come back, right? That has positive probability. So again, the return probability is going to be less than 1, because with probability a half times a third equals a sixth, we end up going straight out to 5 immediately. So the return probability is less than 1, so that is transient. Similarly, for the same reason, from 3, we might go to 4 in a way, so it's transient. And from 2, we might go say, from 1 to 4 to 5. You know, that has positive probability, so we might do that. So that's transient too. So in fact, everything on the left is transient, and everything on the right is recurrent. So we're saying here that for 5, 6, and 7, we'll just keep visiting them again and again and again. Whereas with 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the left-hand side, 
We might visit them a, f- a few times. We might even visit them lots of times. But sooner or later, we're going to take that death edge down over to five and never come back again. So we'll only have finitely many visits. It's worth noting here, of course, that these were the two communicating classes, weren't they? And this whole class uh, is uh, is transient. And this whole class is recurrent. That, it turns out, is not a coincidence. 